Sabretooth Tiger vs. Mammoth Who ruled the prehistoric landscapes? In the tapestry of prehistoric landscapes, the saber-toothed tiger and the mammoth stand as iconic symbols of a bygone era immortalized in the journals of natural history. As we embark on a journey to explore the clash of these titans, we delve into the fascinating realms of paleontology, unraveling the epic tale of two formidable species that once roamed the earth in a primal dance of survival. What did they look like? A saber-toothed tiger would most likely have the colors that allowed it to blend in with the long grass when hunting. It might have been spotted to help with the camouflage. Smilodon populator was among the largest known felids, with a body mass range from 220 kilograms, 490 pounds, to over 400 kilograms, 880 pounds, and one estimate suggesting up to 470 kilograms, 1,040 pounds. The saber-toothed tiger's gape allowed it to expand its mouth to 120 degrees. This wide gape was required to allow the cats to fully utilize their teeth, which could be as long as 28 centimeters, 9.5 inches. It hunted by slashing and stabbing at its prey with its fangs. These cats' limbs were shorter and thicker than those of other felines. They also possessed stronger abductor muscles and denser bones. This would have increased the cat's stability and power when wrestling with their prey. Woolly mammoths were around 13 feet, 4 meters tall, and weighed around 6 tons, 5.44 metric tons. They had a stocky build, well adapted to cold climates. Their bodies were covered in a layer of fat, and their limbs were relatively short and stout. Like modern elephants, woolly mammoths had a long, muscular trunk. Woolly mammoths had relatively small ears compared to their living relatives, the African and Asian elephants. One of the most iconic features of woolly mammoths was their impressive tusks. These tusks were elongated, curved incisor teeth that protruded from the sides of their heads. They could grow to be quite long, with some individuals having tusks that reached over 10 feet, 3 meters. The woolly mammoth's most distinctive feature was its thick coat of fur. This coat consisted of long, coarse outer hairs and a dense, insulating undercoat. The woolly mammoth's fur helped it survive in the cold climates of the Pleistocene, providing insulation against the harsh weather. Where did they live? These large cats lived during the Pleistocene Epoch from approximately 2.5 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. Saber-toothed tigers were highly adaptable predators that inhabited a variety of environments. Their fossils have been found in North and South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. The specific habitats they occupied varied depending on the species and geographic location but they were generally found in a range of ecosystems, including grasslands, savannas, and forested areas. Smilodon is perhaps the most well-known saber-toothed cat. Fossils of Smilodon have been found in North and South America. The woolly mammoth lived in steppe tundra habitat, also called mammoth steppe, an ecosystem made up of low shrubs, sedges, and grasses which was widespread across Eurasia and North America during the Pleistocene. But there is some evidence that some populations also inhabited forests of the present-day Midwestern United States. The woolly mammoth was herbivorous, consuming the stems and leaves of tundra plants and shrubs. What did they eat? The fossil records of the saber-toothed tiger's teeth show that they usually ate massive creatures with thick skin and muscles, then left the bones for another scavenger. If they ate a lot of bones, the teeth develop an obvious wear pattern, which saber-toothed tiger fossils do not have. The saber-toothed tiger was an excellent hunter, taking down numerous animals on its own, including bison, camels, horses, woolly mammoths, mastodons, 
and enormous sloths. The woolly mammoth was a herbivorous mammal with a varied diet that adapted to the changing landscapes of the Pleistocene epoch. They were primarily grazers, consuming a diet composed mainly of grasses, sedges, and other herbaceous plants. Mammoths had a complex set of teeth, including large, ridged molars adapted for grinding fibrous plant material. In addition to grasses, mammoths likely consumed a variety of plant species, including shrubs and small trees, when available. How did they behave in the wild? Unlike modern cats such as tigers and house cats who hunt alone, the saber-toothed tiger was a sociable creature. It is believed that they lived in packs and had a social structure similar to that of lions. It is possible but not proven that saber-toothed tigers were polyesterous periodically. That means that the female may become pregnant more than once throughout the breeding season. Every year in the spring, each fertile female would become pregnant by a dominant male she accepted. The males would fight each other over the females. The gestation period for a baby saber-toothed tiger was eight months. A typical litter of cubs was three. Woolly mammoths were likely social animals that formed herds or groups. The social structure may have included family units with adult females and their offspring forming a cohesive group. Mammoths, like modern elephants, were likely to exhibit a matriarchal social structure, with older, more experienced females leading the herd. Breeding behavior and courtship rituals probably occurred during specific times of the year, and males may have engaged in competitive behaviors for access to females in estrus. Mammoths probably exhibited some form of parental care, with mothers providing protection and guidance to their calves. Now let's find out who would win a fight between a saber-toothed tiger and a mammoth. In the untamed theater of the Pleistocene epoch, where colossal beasts reigned supreme, two iconic giants, the saber-toothed tiger and the mammoth, stood as formidable rulers of the prehistoric landscapes. The saber-toothed tiger, with its razor-sharp curving canines and robust build, emerges as a fearsome predator, finely tuned for swift and deadly strikes. Armed with a set of retractable claws and a muscled physique, Smilodon possessed unparalleled agility and predatory prowess. On the opposing side of this prehistoric power struggle looms the mammoth, a colossal herbivore endowed with immense size, a towering set of tusks, and a thick shaggy coat. These gentle giants roamed the vast expanses of Ice Age landscapes, utilizing their formidable tusks for defense against predators and in ritualized battles for dominance within their own herds. With a sheer mass that could deter most predators, the mammoth's imposing stature granted it a sense of invulnerability in the ancient world. But it's important to recognize that they weren't taking on giant adult mammoths. They would be too large and too dangerous to hunt, just as modern elephants aren't hunted by lions or tigers or crocodiles today. Sabertooths would have attacked young mammoths, probably yearlings that would have been less under their mother's eye, but still small enough to not be terribly difficult to kill. With fewer and more precise movements, the tiger could very possibly bite through the neck hide and kill the mammoth after injuring its hindquarters, as lions and tigers do today to large animals. This is providing it doesn't get critically injured by any tusk thrashing. Saber-toothed predators in general are adapted specifically for killing big, thick-skinned prey. So saber-tooths probably ate a fair bit of mammoth in their day. Assuming that extinct species formed social groups like their living relatives, the models predict larger prey for prehistoric carnivores that hunted in packs. A group of saber-tooths would have been able to kill a mammoth. The mammoth has an advantage over any wild cat. But if the tigers approach together like lions and will fight as a team, they would have a chance. The mammoth is huge and well protected, but would be constantly harassed and unable to rest. 
Eventually, the saber-toothed tigers would wear through the tough hide over some vulnerable area, and a leg would be crippled, then another, and possibly a third. Once on the ground, the mammoth would be dead. In a battle between mammoth and saber-toothed cat, then, an adult herbivore would probably beat a carnivore, unless it wasn't a fair fight, and the prehistoric feline brought its friends along, too.